Hi, everybody. It's Marcy here. And today we are so happy to have Hillary Kirchner. Hi, Hillary. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? Really great. Thank you so much. Enjoying the sunshine. Thank you so much for coming out today. We're going to have a great conversation about creating courses with your expert knowledge. But Hillary, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Hillary Kirchner. I'm the owner and CEO of Dream Right Creative. And we're an editorial and instructional design agency based in Columbus, Ohio, but we have clients all over the U.S. And we help companies turn their genius into content and courses that generate extra revenue and get people up to speed fast. Um, and our approach to content and how we do things is a little bit different because we specialize in any subject matter that is technical, stressful, challenging, or boring to <laughs> the general public, you know, um, that most people are like, why would you ever want to work in that? That's our, what we love to do. We love to make it exciting and accessible and really interesting to a broader audience so that our clients and their companies can really grow and scale. We love that boring. Some of what we talk about sometimes seems boring. To us, we're passionate about it. I know, to the general so public, they're like, eh, that doesn't seem so funny. But what can, tell me, so let's talk about, let's start at the beginning. What type of person would be a good candidate to kick off a course or share their, their work? Does it have to be a large company? Can it be a small company? Can it just be a random individual who has a lot of expertise in what they do every day? Yeah, all of the above, actually. So I think, you know, when you think courses, you often think big corporations who have a training and development team mm -hmm. who want to, you know, onboard a lot of people for internal growth, you know, a new hire and they're training for sales and stuff, which is great. You know, you may need that for your internal team as you grow. I am all about that. But for small businesses or the solopreneur or the micro business where you have maybe just five or fewer employees working with you, um, it can be a really great way to not only have a marketing content engine to really gold mine every you know bit of your content marketing, but also have another revenue stream coming in. Because when you're that small, your time is limited. So you have to be able to share your expertise in new ways mm -hmm. so that you can maximize how many people that you reach. Certainly that old ad time is money mm -hmm. uh, definitely relates down to a smaller individual. So, all right. So let's say we know pretty much everyone qualifies to do a course or have a, some content out there. What would be the first step? Like, how do I decide, okay, I want to do a course about my expertise or what I do every day, but is it a matter of, okay, picking a small topic and starting there? Or do you look overall at your job description? Is it making an outline? Like, how do we even get started with that? Yeah. So one of the first things is to decide what, you know, topic you think you want to create a course about. Um, and look at the logistics of how you want to do that. So that is the the baseline question, like where do I even start? What who would care about what I want to talk about? You know, you know, that's the question that we often get from our small business clients in particular. And what I like to say is kind of create a Venn diagram, you know, the two circles overlapping um, of all the ideas that you have of what you might, want to teach somebody. And it doesn't have to be your current clients. It can be, it can absolutely be a pain point in working with them, like onboarding to your process, something that you are tired of, you know, telling them over and over and over how to do, you know, get into your portal or something um, and how to work with, work with you. Um, or it could be, you know, maybe you're training the next generation of notaries or what, you know, getting prepared for an exam or what you do, um, a new type of client, all of your ideas in one circle, right? And then start listening to your clients, to people that you're networking with. What are they asking about? What are the frequently asked questions to you about your business? And see if there's any overlap. And where they overlap, that's going to be kind of your sweet spot for topics. 
And once you have your narrowed down topics, then you're going to want to decide, would this work best maybe in a workshop that I facilitate? That's often a good first step, whether it's, you know, on Zoom or at a local chamber of commerce, you know, networking type event. It's a good way to actually get everything out, have someone record it so you have that content. And then you can turn it into an on-demand, like electronic or immersive interactive course later. But that yeah, way you get it all out of your head. Mm -hmm. Well, and I love what you said about, you know, what questions are you being asked? Because that is key, right? Uh, so I say it's a loan signing agent here and my own people will be like, what does that actually entail? Like, what do you do? Right. People don't really know. So when we talk about courses, it's not always about necessarily like teaching someone your job. Sometimes it's just an education piece. Hey, here's what loan signing agents do. Here's what, uh, you know, hairstylists, estheticians, you know, uh, estate attorneys, trademarks, it doesn't matter what it is that you do. Sometimes it's really just educating that other entity. So at the same time, you're providing a value education on their end, mm -hmm. but it's also a little bit of a marketing piece, right? Am I incorrect in saying that no, you're getting you're your word out correct. there as to who you are? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. So there's kind of two main ways to look at it. If you are doing it, um, you know, as a small business, as a way to grow. So, you know, setting aside any sort of like internal training of like new hires or team members, if you're looking to grow, in sort of a marketing type way. Uh, do you want it to be a product that you sell, a course that you sell for revenue stream, or do you want it to be and or your main content piece for marketing that you don't necessarily sell? Is it your thought leadership piece? Because once you have that, uh, that course out there, it is a gold mine of nuggets and content if you record yourself teaching a workshop like this, you know, fireside chat or, um, you know, a, a Zoom call, you have audio, you have video, you can transcribe it and you have a blog post, you can turn it into social media, and then you have, you can make months worth of content and there's your marketing, you know, content for you. And I love that you said that because that is key, right? So it's, when we say courses, a lot of times, like you said, you think about, oh, you know, engaging employees or teaching them how to do something. But there's that flip side of it. We talk about courses are, okay, getting information out to make you the expert in your field, right? To show what you know and how you do it, to, to disseminate that knowledge to other individuals so that when, when they're looking for someone who uh, they need that service that you offer, they'll remember, you know, I saw her post on LinkedIn, or I saw that snippet of information on her YouTube channel or whatever that might be. You're right. That content can be repurposed for months and months, even years, really, if it's an evergreen type of thing that you're talking about. So putting in the time up front to do these kinds of things, which may be a little time consuming up front, really allows you a lot of opportunity later on down the road where there isn't a lot of time or effort to put in. Do you think that, um, more people do courses in your experience to sell, or are you starting to now see it as more of a branding type tool? A bit of both, a bit of both. Um, I'd say, you know, it's honestly both of equal okay. parts. Um, I'd say whenever somebody tries to make a course or a series of courses, it's usually not just a one-off and then they're done. They don't do another piece. Um, they might do a small workbook or a guidebook as a freebie. So that purely is their marketing kind of lead generation, draw them in. And then other bigger pieces or bigger courses, you know, are the paid sort of revenue stream. And you're right. It is a bigger kind of time energy investment up front to get them made and get all that information out of your head get it recorded or if you're putting it into print or on a website into an immersive e-learning experience, get it made. Um, but once it's there, it's there and it becomes a passive revenue stream it, or it can be, you know, um, so it can really help in once you do get busy again to have that keep coming 
And you're right, it can help people remember you, but also it can help you have better vetted clients and clients that come to you that need less onboarding and less training to know what it is you do so that you can get down to get down to business once you have them in hand. So that makes great sense. I love that. Yeah. All right. So now we've decided to do a course. We decided whether it's, you know, of course of content for learning or for marketing, we've the topic. Um, what do we do? Do we need to come up with some sort of outline? Like what's the creative process in doing mm-hmm. this? Because I feel like most people have a lot of great information in their head. How does that convert into some sort of media? Like how do they get that, get from point A to point B? Mm-hmm. So there are kind of three things. If you learn nothing else about instructional design. (laughs) All um, right, here we go. Listen up. Three things you need to know. Three things that you want to make sure that your content is, is that it's interesting. And by that, I mean that it is, you know, relevant to what your audience is looking to solve right at that moment. Um, It, you know, is related to their past experience. Um, It doesn't have to be, you know, superheroes and explosions everywhere kind of interesting. It can be, that's also fun, Um, but also memorable. And by that, I mean, it's structured well so that you're not assuming that they know more than they do. Start with the basics, but give them what they, the answers that they need up front and opportunities to learn more if they need to in other ways. Um, So for instance, if you're teaching them about a concept that answers a common question, answer that question right up front. But if there's more nuance to it that you know that they need, but they're not asking about it, put that in a blog post or a if you want to learn more, click here type of, you know, add on to your course under the video. Um, That can really work wonders for them to, okay, I understand this basic concept. Now I'm going to go learn more. So that helps the memory part of it. And then more than anything else, make sure it's actionable at the very end. Like they should come away being able to do something. So by the end of your course, start thinking about what do you want them to be able to do once they're done with your course? Not just what do you want them to learn, but what do you want them to be able to do or be ready to do? Okay, that makes great sense. And I love the part where you said, tell them up front what they're looking for. Because uh, the reality is that most people in general with in the social media era, have a very small attention span, right? You only have seconds to capture uh, yeah. them normally. And so you want that to be a hook so that they say, oh, this is great. And maybe they have time and they go through the rest of it. Or maybe they think to themselves, you know what? This is really something that I want to dig into deeper, but I don't have the time or attention span right now. Let me put this aside to come back, you know, in a day or two days. But they'll appreciate that you valued their time in telling them up front what it is they needed to know. Mm-hmm. And is that how people perceive that as a value? Hey, I didn't have to listen to 20 minutes of, you know, garbled whatever, or an ad, right? They told me what I wanted to know up front. And I appreciate that that mm-hmm. was a value of my time. They gave me the information up front and kind of promotes you in that space of, hey, I understand we're in the same place. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when, if you're talking about a topic that is going to inherently be a little bit stressful. So that could be, you know, anything having to do with legal things. I know right. like notaries. Legal you're, you're working with legal not papers. always super exciting or sexy, but we do love it and we're passionate about it. Yep. So anything legal, uh, medical, uh, finance, technology, all that stuff for a lot of people, just as soon as you start talking about it, their stress levels are going to go up in their brain, whether they're conscious of it or not. So your job as the content creator is to either reduce those stress levels or to help them bypass it by being empathetic in how you present that content. So make it bite-sized pieces, make it interesting, memorable, actionable, so they can 
work through it and build upon what they've learned and actually do something with it. So the, the little persona that I like to think about when I'm evaluating my own content to see if it hits those three marks is, is it I'm a the ultimate content? So I am a, I'm a the ultimate. Yeah. All right. Now content creator, I call that a buzzword. Uh, it seems like everybody is a content creator today, right? But um, I like to say I am not a content creator. Like I am terrible, I think. Uh, I'm one of those people who has lots of knowledge or information, but doesn't always translate well for me because I have a lot of knowledge, right? So sometimes I forget that not everyone on the other side of me knows exactly what it is that I'm talking about, especially if it's a more complicated or um, intensive sort of conversation that has to be had. So when we talk about content creation, and I love that you have those three things, but is there a rule of thumb when it comes to my expertise and getting that across to the other person? So like sometimes I'll watch videos of other people and I'll be like, I can tell if this person really knows her stuff, right? Maybe I don't know the topic at all, but I can tell that what she's talking about, she's very knowledgeable. Is there something that can convey that to our audience in that short piece of time? Is it the way that we talk or our cadence or is it the PowerPoint that we throw up there or the colors that we use or the outfit that we're wearing? Like, is there some sort of science to all of that? Oh, well, there are a lot of different views on, you know, the science of presentation and, you know, uh, articulation. If you're, you know, presenting orally or verbally, you know, um, presenting that way. I am not particularly the best verbal presenter. <laughs> so um, I am definitely more of the, the writer type presenter. But yes, I would say anytime that you can come into it with real world examples and scenarios that speak to your audience, um, that is inherently going to make that emotional connection with them. And as soon as you can make that emotional connection and show that you know their lived experience, that's going to make the connection in their head that, okay, this person understands my experience. They understand me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be more likely to listen to what they have to say. And then once you cross that hurdle then you can talk about your knowledge and back it up with, you know, your sources and your information. But your if you don't have that, piece. yeah, if you don't have that emotional connection and that relevance to their lived experience, um, like if all of your real world scenarios that you talk about have nothing to do with what they're doing like if your real estate transactions are all commercial and they're trying to buy a house they're gonna be like I don't think this person knows at all what they're talking about you know maybe and that makes complete yeah. sense right that's yeah. important um I just said oh so I want to go back to this for a bit because you said that you know you're not the best maybe verbal presenter and certainly there are times where I'm not either realistically I tend to talk very quickly sometimes or slow down um, or I'll go from topic to topic in my head. Is it, is that, does that kind of dictate to what your medium would be for conveying that information? Like, let's say you're really great at the verbal thing. You are very dynamic. Would that lend more to, hey, I'm going to record a video, right? Or a short sort of reel for a social media. Or if you're not great at that, but you're an amazing writer, would you be like, okay, I'm going to really work on blog posts and press releases and you know, a course based off of a PowerPoint presentation, or should your course be a mixture of all of the things? Yeah. So you should always start with what your audience needs. And honestly, the more multimedia you can make something, the better, because people are coming from all different areas of life. Some people in the moment are going to be better at learning by listening. You know, maybe they're driving in their car and that's the time that they, you know, learn best. Um, some people learn best by doing. So they might want to have a checklist or something active that they can, you know, work against while they're also listening to you. Um, but some people are visual learners, so they might want to see you talking. 
They might also not, um, they might have a learning disability or a neuro, you know, divergence difference um, that they need to work around. So the more different media you can provide something, the better for the learner typically, but that's not to say that you have to do everything in video and it has to be multimedia all the time because there's realistic logistical concerns here. <laughs> if it's not something that you're comfortable doing, you're not going to end up doing it. So it's, it's not going to work anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, in marketing, the best marketing plan is the marketing plan you're going to do. So the marketing calendar that's every day is great, but it means nothing if you're not going to do it. That's true. I have to, I have to hundred percent agree with that. The best yeah. of intentions, right? Yeah. Um, so it's good to know that I have to do all of the things all of the time. We talked a little bit offline previously and I was saying to you, we're just seeing all of these courses and classes and everyone's teaching, right? Because everyone wants to make sure that, you know, there are industries that are not as uh, profitable currently, right? Or successful because of what's going on in the economy or where you live or all those things. So people are trying to really uh, come up with other revenue streams. Are you seeing this whole course class kind of thing really sort of taking over out there? Because I see it all the time in all the spaces, right? Places like Google and Coursera and Udemy are really seem to be exploding now with the amount of individuals who are out there saying, hey, I'm going to share my information. I'm going to share my wealth. And part of that too, I think, is people who are finding dissatisfaction maybe what they do, but are looking for other career opportunities maybe you know, COVID kind of shifted all that. Do you see this as being sort of a wave of the future kind of thing? More solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, micro businesses really trying to share their information, their not wealth and of knowledge with other individuals, industries to try to create more of a, you know, an awakening there of other possibilities for careers or other services that maybe haven't been to the forefront, right? We see all of these for your, for example, your company, right? How many companies have seen in the past where like, hey, we're going to help you do these kinds of things, right? Not very often. And if they were, they were these giant companies that, like you said, you know, uh, branded companies that could afford to hire a company to do that. But that's not the case anymore. Do you see this as kind of being a wave of the future type of situation? Yeah, absolutely. So I, you know, we're based in Ohio and over the COVID pandemic, our rates of micro businesses, which here in Ohio is any business that has fewer than 20 full-time employees, um, skyrocketed. You know, a large majority of those businesses too are women-owned businesses because that is the wave of how businesses is, is done. That is how we get the flexibility that you know we need to make life happen and deal with school and the pandemic and, you know, raising kids and dealing with, you know, caring for our families and everything. Um, so I think entrepreneurship really does allow for a lot of this to happen. And courses are one of the best ways to get your business out there in a sustainable way as a small or micro business. Um, so I think that has a lot to do with it. And it is one of the fastest growing industries, you know, with platforms like Kajabi or Thinkific, it is really democratizing how easily it is to make, you know, e-learning and immersive e-learning mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily need to be a, you know, well-versed web developer in your own right or have a big team behind you, you can absolutely have that. And, you know, there are folks like me who can help with that. Um, but you don't need to be a big multi-million dollar business to do that anymore. Yeah. And that's good to know for all of us small ones out here. Hillary, this was such amazing information. Oh my gosh, thank you for taking the time out of your talk to us. I really you. love this. And I think it was helpful for a lot of the audience out there who've been kind of sitting on it thinking maybe they're not, you know, maybe they don't have enough experience or enough wherewithal to go out and do this. But it sounds like from you, hey, that's not the case, right? We want to hear from everybody. This is super yeah. inclusive out there. Small businesses, solopreneurs, we all have big ideas and they deserve to be heard too. And that is 
what I'm all about. I, you know, I think we all deserve a space to share our ideas. And this is one of the best ways to do that. I love that. Everybody share your ideas. We love to hear that. Thank you all so much for joining Hillary and I today. We certainly appreciate you. Hillary, thank you again for joining us. I appreciate it. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you.